Hi, I'm Burke McDonald with Schaumburg Heartbeat. We're over at the Senior Center today. That's in the Community Recreation Center uh, in Schaumburg with Lisa Perrone. She's the Senior Center Supervisor. That's a lot of S's. <laughs> it is. Or S and C's, isn't it? <laughs> okay. You guys, you have a whole program here, and it's amazing all the things that everybody does, uh, from uh, bocce ball in the summer to, uh, do you have snowball fights in the winter? When it's well, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> we, have a, we have a lot of seniors that come through our doors, and we're thrilled. Uh, we do a lot of in-house things. Um, we do a lot of trips, and we do them year-round, winter to summer. Right, you do them. Re fall. In fact, there's one going out today. You said the Addison yes. to a Peruvian. Is Peruvian it? restaurant for our lunch club. We do a monthly lunch club. Um, very popular. Got to sign up right away uh, when you see it in the book. And uh, we try a lot of kind of exotic restaurants because everybody can just get steak and potatoes right. on their own. That's you know? true. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned the book, and I think it's, it's important that we – tell people there's two ways to get information on what's going on. One is through the, the book that goes out to every resident in Schaumburg every month, and then you can go on the internet at parkfun.com and go to the senior part. You can get the book on there and go to the senior part and see everything also, right? Correct, correct. And you can always call the senior center as well. Okay. So wh the daily activities that go on here are what they, I know they play, is that pool or billiards? I know billiards. there's a different, billiards. Billiards, okay. they play billiards, um, it'll, uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday right now. We're going to extend the hours to Saturdays and Sundays as well. We have Saturdays quite a, quite and Sundays. Yes, quite a lot of people like to play billiards. A lot of women too, not just men, which right. is great. Um, yeah, and we have that program going. We have Pinaco, Canasta, um, Dominoes uh, during the week, all throughout the week. Now, um, if somebody mm -hmm. comes in and they're not really, like, I, I, I really, I know poker is a big deal, and I'm a guy, so I'm supposed to know poker, but I don't know poker. Will they work with me? And absolutely, help me? absolutely. I'd probably take all my money. But I had a lady ask me this morning, you know, I used to play canasta, but I'm really rusty. They sit, she sits down with them at the table, and before you know it, she's coming every week and joining in. Oh, well, that sounds yeah, great. Yeah, Okay, and then there's... Uh, you can't do bocce ball, obviously, in right, the winter, but right. you have bags, right? Right. They do bags indoors, um, uh, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And um, we also have table tennis on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the gym, a very large group of table tennis uh, guys and gals. And um, we do luncheons in-house uh, about every other month. Uh, we also have bingo every Wednesdays, which is a big favorite, of course. Now, on, on these activities that we're talking about here, uh, the, the cards and the billiards and the ping pong and so on. Mm -hmm. Is there a cost for this? No, it's all drop-in. It's um, all drop -in. The, Our luncheons are, are, are pay. You do pay to come to our luncheons because they're catered and we have entertainment. Um, and our lunch clubs. It's just the fee, a small fee for the bus and then they pay for lunch on their own. We just kind of pick out the restaurants, do it easy and pull up right next door, you know. But everything else is drop-in and anybody is welcome. You do, you do not have to be a resident of Schaumburg. But, and everybody, you, it's great coffee, but you can't touch the coffee. <laughs> exactly. Right? I have a pretty fancy coffee maker, but we make a lot of coffee here. So yeah. Um, and then we always have coffee and tea. Um, if you come for the day, we've got a fridge, we've got a microwave, and it's, uh, you can make yourself at home. Now, I know that you, we have these trips and you go to a lot of the, the major theaters in the Chicagoland area, right? Yes, um, we've been known to do 80 trips a year, so it's a lot, which right. is why I have a cheat sheet because I can't right. remember everything we do, Burke. Um, but yeah, we, we do everything from the opera. We go to the opera uh, mostly in the winter because that's when the opera is. Uh, we do the Broadway and Chicago shows. We've done all the big shows. We've done Hamilton. We've done Jersey Boys. You know, we've done Million Dollar Quartet. All of the big shows because um, if, that, that, if they ask me, then I get but, tickets. But we have a limit here because you have one bus. Right, right. right. And that's what, you, once that fills up, Right. Um, that's right. it for the. So you need right. to read the Sometimes book. Sometimes, if if we get if we get an overabundance, I will book a second trip. Um, you know, but I if you you look in the book and you got to look at registration dates. Um, first registration date is always for residents, and that's always on a Monday. Um, if you're really serious about something, come in and sign up because otherwise it may be gone the next time right. you look. Um, and then that same week, Friday is when our non-residents mm -hmm. are able to register. And uh, we like to try to accommodate as many people as possible, which is why we sometimes do more than one trip. And the reason we're being vague on the dates is this changes with every season. Yeah. And every season they have a new set of programs or trips and so on. So you need to read that book to know these dates. Or, or give us a call. Mary and I can answer all your questions as well. Okay. Now, I hear you do some overnight trips. 
And one of them I heard of, it, it sounds like it's for cops only. It, it's an 80-mile donut tour. Um, an 80-mile donut, donut tour. Okay, it's over three days. It's in Ohio. We're Do doing they have it in scales April. on the way so they know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we visit 12 donut shops in that time. But there's a lot of other really great little places we're going to visit and go see. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's going to be a really fun trip. It's, um, it's kind of a trendy one, I think, right now. We jumped on it right away, and we've got a great guide. Um, it's happening April 10th to the 12th. Okay. Um, but there's other trips, too, right? To oh. A few overnight trips yeah, to we go do, up to Wisconsin. We do. We do. We also do um, casino trips, three-day casino trips that uh, the seniors really love. We always have something in the middle of the casino trip for the people that are not real big casino people, um, on, like an added trip in, in within the trip. Okay. And we do that. And um, we do uh, we do long distance trips too. We take uh, tour companies and do a lot of those as well. Um, we've gone everywhere from China to Italy to the Canadian. No, Rockies. our bus. Yeah, I know. It's not chitty, chitty, bang, bang. We don't do that. <laughs> um, but we, we, do, we do go with very reliable uh, tour companies, and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. And I, there are some people that have, that have seen China now that that was their, their, yeah, on their bucket their list. Right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. sounds really neat. Which is great. I'm really glad we're able to do that for them. Now, I, we're at the CRC, so, <laughs> and obviously the CRC is a place that most of the people know it as a fitness center. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the seniors here participate oh, in yeah. some of those fitness exercises, They right? do. They do. We, we have some really great um, programs like Ageless Grace, which you can, you can do sitting down. So it's for everybody of any ability. Um, then we have our punch card. They do everything from yoga, you know, to a strength training. Um, the punch card system is, is a good system. And, um, and swimming. Swimming. swimming we have water aerobics. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different mm -hmm. options there. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a lot of people take advantage of it. And they come over here and have a cup of coffee with us and say hi. Yeah, that's, that's the fun part, they come over here. <laughs> exactly. You know, I was really impressed today when I came in to do this shoot. There were mm -hmm. some people sitting out there having coffee. Mm -hmm. And these people, I think, have moved away from Schaumburg, but they remember living close here, coming to the senior center, and the warmth and so on. They came in and had a cup of coffee, and then there happened to be a funeral nearby that they went to. I was really impressed that they mm -hmm. really... They, they love this place. Uh, well, I'll tell you, we, you know, we have a lot of people that move on and, and go on to, to places like Friendship Village or to, uh, for live their living arrangements right. and such, and they still come back, and they still do our programs. They still do our trips. Um, we, do, we do a nice um, non-resident, you know, because people know they come back. Um, we try to make them feel as welcome as possible because I like well, when they come that. back. You yeah, know, you we, do, we really love that. our seniors, and we love, um, you know, we get to know them, their families. It's, it's a wonderful thing, and then when you're on a trip with them, all you do is laugh. We were on a trip yesterday, and mm -hmm. all we did was laugh on the bus, so, yeah. Well, that's, a, that's what you do. Life <laughs> is a bunch of stories, right? It is. And that's it what is. you need to and do. And they have the best stories ever, so. Well, I, you know, I, I think people know about the Senior Center, but there may be, there's probably a lot of people in Chambry that don't, or they've heard of it, and they don't know where it is. Why don't you come over and visit it, and... Uh, meet with some of the people, I think you'll be welcomed very quickly, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, we, um, you can call us. So we do have newcomer meetings um, every other month. Okay. Um, they can sign up for that, but you can just call us and come in. We always have time to take you around, show you around. Um, I, I, I like to pride ourselves in having really friendly people here in Schomburg, and I think people really enjoy it when they come. I think we make them feel welcome. And I was going to say, if you're alone, Say you've just retired and you really want something to do. We get a lot of people that just retire and they're like, now what do I do? Right. Um, if you're alone, if you're a widow, a widower, come. I can guarantee you after a couple trips you're going to have, may have more friends than you know what to do with. Okay, we're, with, we're here with some ladies that have been in exercise class and they're coming down here for their shot of coffee. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so tell me, um, what type of exercise do you do, and then why do you come down to the Senior Center? Well, it's a cardio conditioning class, and we start out by stretching, and then we do he pretty heavy cardio, and then we have a cool down afterwards. Okay. Yeah, and we use weights, a little bit of jazzercise sometimes, or um, dance. balance, dance, yeah. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you, is, are there other classes that you participate in? Yes. What, what are some of the other classes? Uh, they're called different names, but they're all in the morning. I do four mornings a week. 
four mornings a week. Oh, well, so you're really active and you keep in shape. I try. You try. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find the instructors here? Most of them are good. Most of them are good. That's a nice, polite way of saying there might be one in, hidden in the crowd there, but that's that's fine. I mean, you you always do. Any of you swim? I no. used to swim. You used to swim. Okay. And and what was the swimming like when you used to swim? It was good. I went four times a week, and um, I, I liked the swimming. It was same exercise, cardio, and it was. Um, you didn't use your muscles as much in the water, you know, but it was good. And then I stopped and I went here for uh, land and I like the land. Okay, do you do anything else down here with the cards or any of the other activities? Go on trips or anything with the people? I go on trips. I go to, uh, with CRC on uh, their trips, their bus trips. Okay, and, and what's that like? I love it. We just went yesterday to Fireside and it was phenomenal and they always do a great job at fireside we go downtown to plays we go out to lunch it's great and then we have lunch here at crc and we have uh, saint patrick's day we have trivia pursuit on those lunches and i've been to all of them well that sounds good um how long have you been coming to the CRC? I have been coming to classes for six years now. Since six? I That's retired, a long time. And yeah. I live close by. I was looking for a place with convenient morning classes, and this fit the bill. Fits yeah. the bill. Well, that's yeah. good. And and how long have you been coming over here? You know, I don't even know. If you've been coming that long, I've been coming longer. Yeah. So okay. I don't really know. So would you recommend that yeah. uh, other seniors might get involved in this? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I love the classes. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very much welcome. for taking the time to do this. It's my pleasure. Uh, I'm a senior citizen. In fact, all the people that work on this show, except for our editor, are senior citizens. Um, we all enjoy working with the Park District. We hope that you'll get yourselves involved, too. I'm Burke McDonald with Schaumburg Heartbeat, and don't forget, take time for fun. <laughs>Hi, I'm Burke McDonald with Schomburg Heartbeat. Today we're going to meet with the Kenneth Young Center and we're going to talk about caregiving. It's a very important subject that people know it goes on, uh, but people don't really worry about it until it's time that they might have to get involved with it. And I think you need to think about this a little bit ahead of time. We're with Chrissy Castillo. She's the Director of Older Adult Services at Kenneth Young Center. And they have a lot of uh, options available for you, and they can get you a lot of assistance. So let's start out by sort of giving ourselves a definition. Basically, we're talking about people that are assisting other people that are there at a time of their lives when they need assistance, maybe for a medical reason, or they're getting older, or they've gone through some type of surgery. Does that sound like a good definition? That is a good definition. A caregiver is anyone who's providing care to another individual, whether it's for a physical um, impairment, whether it's a cognitive impairment, or like you said, whether someone's just getting older. One of the things that people really know, you get into this situation many times, you just don't know what to do. And you need to have information, you need to have education. We're going to try and talk about some of the things that you should be thinking about. And, and the first one is possibly 
How do you start to get a feel for somebody maybe needing assistance? Obviously, a doctor, when they diagnose somebody, it's pretty obvious at that one, right? A, a doctor may recommend that either someone is starting to need care or a, a family member needs to step up and start acting as a caregiver for, for their family member. Um, someone who may not be collecting their mail on a daily basis like they normally that's good, do. That's a good sign. Um, they may not be taking their medication like they normally would be taking it on a regular basis at the same time every day. Um, they may be missing appointments. Okay, well, one other thing is uh, I, I know a lot of people after they retire get very involved socially either with their, their religious organization or the park district and the villages have senior centers where people go and socialize and are active every day, if Absolutely. they stop doing that, isn't, that's probably a sign, right? That is most definitely a sign if they start to withdraw from normal activities. A lot of people have hobbies. That would be another... Most definitely. They stop doing their normal hobbies. They're no longer crocheting or no longer doing their woodworking. So what if you're a family member and you see that happening, what, what should you say to your family member? I, the first thing to do is ask them, you know, what's going on. If they if they're feeling any type of change happening, um, if they're noticing anything different um, in the way they go about doing their their normal activities, um, sometimes it's um, people aren't willing to identify the changes that are happening either within their body or within their mind. Um, so sometimes it's a, a, a casual interaction that a family member may start um, needing to perform different tasks um, without even letting their loved one know that they're doing this. I guess another thing, because a neighbor could be involved or a family comes over for a meal or just for a visit and if they notice things in the house aren't the same or a neighbor happens to notice they're not keeping up their lawn like they used to, Absolutely. those are things somebody should... The neighbor could then definitely let a family member know that these things are happening. Sometimes a neighbor unexpectedly becomes the caregiver for, for another individual. Um, and they're classified as, you know, non-family caregiver, um, where they may not provide caregiving services on a 24-hour basis, but they may be bringing in the mail or assisting with the grocery right. shopping. You know, that's a good point. Uh, my mom happened to live in Florida many years ago, and there was a, a person that she got to know down there, and all of a sudden this person was having some difficulties, and the family was asking her to be the caregiver, and at that point, she was up in her 80s, and that gets to be difficult. So we're going to have to talk about some family communications at some point, right? Absolutely. Um, you mentioned to me before we went on the air, bills not being paid. Obviously, if the electricity goes off or the gas or something, that's pretty obvious. But you said sometimes people go in their doctor's office and the uh, doctor informs them that their insurance isn't, right? Sometimes people forget to pay their supplemental insurance and all of a sudden they go to a doctor's appointment and they no longer have, they have their Medicare, but they may no longer have their supplement Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance um, that they thought they were paying. And all of a sudden it, you know, is known that they haven't been paying those bills. Um, probably one of the first things that they need to do is and, and these are readily available through you or through lots of resources, is you need to get power, powers of health or powers of attorney in order to be able to take care of people if they need health uh, recommendations or if they need work with their banks accounts and so on, right? We, we always recommend that everyone should have a health care power of attorney or a power of attorney for finance because it just makes the whole process a little bit smoother when someone's not able to do those tasks any longer. So that's always something that we talk to our clients about is do you have a health care power of attorney or a health care power of attorney for or a power of attorney for finance I should say. Okay before we get into the services that you offer and there's really quite a few services that are offered are again I think we need to emphasize you as a caregiver, you have to be aware of your own needs and take care of yourself. It is extremely important for caregivers to be aware of their own needs and to make sure that they're also caring for themselves, not just caring for their loved one. And they got to be willing to ask for help. You just can't do this on your own. You definitely can't do it on your own. Sometimes it requires assistance for the caregiver as well as more assistance for the care receiver. Okay, because I, I know a lot of people say, well, I can handle this. It's just, you know, yeah, I have a job, I have this, but somehow I'll get it to work. And really, you need to step back and say, wait a second, I need to work with that, right? Absolutely. Okay, um, 
So be aware of your own needs, take care of them. Now, there are a lot of services that you can do. One of the main ones is you can give it, you can do an assessment. And when you do an assessment, what are some of the things that you're looking for when you so whenever someone is in need of services or is interested in obtaining services from us, the first thing we do is they would call our information and assistance office. We take down some information from them, their demographic information, maybe some medical history information. Um, and then we ask permission to come out to their home and do an assessment. During that assessment, we ask information about all aspects of their life. We want to find out what's happening with their medical history, what's happening with their medications, um, multiple things, what's going on with their nutrition, are they driving, um, all kinds of things like that. The assessment usually takes about an hour, hour and a half because we want to obtain as much information as possible in order to connect people with the appropriate services. Okay, if, I guess another thing, many times the people that are going to be involved in this are families. Uh, uh, I suppose if it's a one-child family, then that child is probably going to be doing the, all the work. But in many families, there's two or three children involved. And uh, when I was doing reading for this, I thought, yeah, this is probably a pretty good idea. You got to watch out. You don't go back to your childhood roles. You're an adult now, right? You're an adult. You need to utilize, you know, the skills that you have obtained as an adult and take those skills in order to best help the person that you're caring for. And, and Every family, there's usually different occupations involved and different strengths and weaknesses. Take advantage of that, right? Absolutely. If you, if you are an accountant, you know, maybe you should be the um, power of attorney for finance. If you um, are a nurse, it, it may be beneficial to be the power of attorney for healthcare care because you're used to being in a medical setting and you're able to speak to other medical professionals. And understand what they're saying. Absolutely. Um, the other important thing is to communicate. Sometimes that might be because family are scattered throughout the world now, the country throughout the world. Communicate as often as possible, uh, especially for that person out of town that feels guilty that they're not there to help. Right? Communication is important when caring for a parent or a loved one. Um, the, the better the communication is, the better the better the facilitating of the caregiving will be because everyone wants to be a caregiver even if they live out of state. So communication is key when working with multiple um, when working with multiple kids in one family. But on the other hand, when, when you're working with a doctor or whatever the facility is, probably there's got to be one key person that, that, it's, that takes on the main role and that other people get information through that. And, and everyone has to be in, on board with that one main person taking on that role, because otherwise it can get a little messy. Right. And we want things to go smoothly. Absolutely. We want things to go in the way that gets the person needing the care gets the most assistance they can get. Definitely. All right. So we've got the family worked out here. Um, and there's a lot of community resources out there. Uh, there's one in, we live in the village of Schaumburg here that, uh, you know, I, some people know, some people don't. But even if you slip and fall, we have a lending closet where you can get some uh, a walker to help you get around while you're recovering, right? Definitely. And we work very closely with the village of Schaumburg. So if people are interested in those types of uh, services or they have those needs um, and we're not able to provide those needs to them, we refer people to the village of Schaumburg or to the township of Schaumburg. Or, um, and that's probably pretty true in um, almost all the other villages, either here absolutely. or in, uh, in the country. Absolutely. Okay, and another thing are support groups. I, I noticed you just started a new program called the Memory Cafe. We did just start a new program called the Memory Cafe. Our first Memory Cafe was January 18th. Our, our Memory Cafe, the concept is to be able to offer um, a setting, a social setting that provides activities and entertainment for someone who has a cognitive impairment as well as their caregiver or their loved one who's attending the cafe with them. So it's, an, it's a social setting which um, it's hard to find for someone who, ha who may be going through um, a cognitive impairment or having difficulty with their memory. For the people running that, that's got to that's bring some joy to them to see these people interacting in a way and with some smiles on their faces. Absolutely. We have a, a long list of volunteers who are interested in, uh, in assisting in our memory cafe. 
But there's a lot of other support groups out there. There, there are some support groups uh, specific to certain diseases, there's, right? There's definitely support groups that are specific to certain di diseases. Um, we offer a support group that is for caregivers. So it's anyone who's caring for a loved one can come to our support group. It's not specific, but if someone is interested in a specific um, support group, we would connect them to that support you group. You know, the group, caregiver group, one of the strengths that I think you would find in that is that when you go there, you're going to find that people are experiencing the same things that you're really frustrated with. Absolutely. And that it isn't just you're going through it, but maybe they found little tricks to handle it. And that's the purpose of the support group, to go there, to express your frustrations, to get support from other individuals going through a very similar experience. Okay. Now, there, and sometimes um, people get involved in things, and, and it, it, it's not going to be just a month or two. It, it, it can end up being long-term. What are some of the things that you at Kenneth Young work with on long-term care type options? Well, our main goal at the Kenneth Young Center is to keep people in their home for as long as possible. So we're able to connect people to, with um, nutrition options, such as the Home Delivered Meals Program. We're able to assess and connect people with a housekeeping program. Um, we can connect people to the Medicaid waiver program called the Community Care Program, which provides a home care aid in their home. Um, we can connect people to the Emergency Home Response Button, um, Adult Day Services. Um, our goal is to keep people in their home, but if it comes to the point in time where someone is not able to safely remain in their home any longer, we also are able to work with the caregiver or family members in regarding providing long-term options for people. What is someone's next level of care and what their needs might be and how we can provide those resources and, to and them. And at least in this area in suburban Chicago, there are quite a few options. There are but the many process options. Is how do you sort through Exactly. Them? And, and it gets very that? overwhelming because there are so many options. So if someone is um, interested in learning about long-term care, we again would go out to the home, complete an assessment, and then work with the individual and their family members to determine what would be best, what would be the best long-term care options for that individual. You know, there gets to be a point where you're just worn out and you know you haven't you haven't been out of the house for a while or you know you go out to get groceries you go out to take the person to the doctor and it just it gets to be overwhelming absolutely and there's going to be times when you physically need a break because again we started off by saying you got to take care of yourself what's available out there if, if somebody you know if you're working full-time with this person and it's really you're afraid to leave the home because they may trip and fall or something. Do you have uh, options available? We talk to um, caregivers about what services we could potentially connect them with. We talk to, um, it, it really depends on someone's individual needs as to what um, caregiver services are available to provide them um, that respite type right. of care that they might need. So um, depending on, each individual's needs. Um, sometimes if they're a client of ours, we can provide them respite care through our services. We can connect them with respite care maybe through a facility. Um, each individual's needs in regards to respite are different, but we definitely would work with the caregiver and the individual to determine what respite needs are best for that individual. You mentioned somebody may be having a graduation down at Southern or Eastern or maybe out in California. There might be, there probably are ways that you can go through and help them out that they can get a break for the weekend and, and still make sure that the Absolutely. person... Absolutely, and th those, are, those are the respite services we are able to offer to some individual clients, um, whether it's through our center or whether it's referring clients to another um, facility in regards to respite services. It kind of just depends individual, but there are respite programs available to people, to caregivers specifically. If, like you said, there's a graduation at Southern Illinois and they're not able to um, get down there because mom can can't be by herself. So we can work with that caregiver in order to find out what the appropriate respite program would be for them. I think everybody's heard Meals on Wheels. That is, that's a service that you have access to to get people to we can definitely get a meal connect, or two into the house. Absolutely. We can definitely connect people okay. to our nutrition program. The caregiver needs to keep in touch with the medical team that they're working with, right? It's very important it's to very work important. with It's very important. Okay. The other thing... You know, it, this is a difficult time, and, and, and for everybody, change is very difficult. 
there's going to be a lot of change going on with the patient, with you, and what you need to be doing. You got to need. You got to be able to accept some change. Absolutely. Right? As as we all age, everyone ages. It's inevitable. So we all we have to be open to the change that's going to happen. And isn't I know this is difficult, and it's easy for me to say and for you to bring up and, and agree with me. But we got to be positive. I mean, if being positive, you find ways to get through the situation, right? You have to be positive. You also have to have an open mind in regards to learning about resources and obtaining new resources. Right. And you got to be willing to accept the fact that th those resources are out there. Take advantage of them. Absolutely. Well, I thank you very much. I know we covered an awful lot of material in a short period of time. But I think this is an important subject. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you think we might want to touch base I think on? I think, Burke, you did a great job of touching on the important parts here. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, you be aware of the fact that Kenneth Young is out there to give you assistance. Uh, if uh, Another place you can probably start off with is by talking to your physician. Many times the religious groups that you're affiliated with have resources. But Kenneth Young is really a, a great big agency that has able to contact lots of other different people to get you some help. So hopefully you found this to be a very useful segment. I'm Burke McDonald with Schomburg Heartbeat, and don't forget, take time for fun.